break the school record for most wins and consecutive wins in a season at 16. And UTRGV had other plans. They dashed their dreams. Now, this is the third game in four days for UTRGV. So we'll see if they got enough gas left in the tank to drive them to this championship. So that matchup just one week ago that went to the Vaqueros. New Mexico State gets the ball first. A berth in the NCAA tournament on the line championship game in the lack here from the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. And you're going to see UTRGV in this zone. Very, very active in the zone. They like to get tips and steals and get off to the races. A whistle and a travel. So Brooks Salas has had an excellent freshman year for New Mexico State. Commits the turnover. Yeah, Brooks Salas made the all-newcomer team in the WAC. Does a nice job. Now Shante Goff, who's got the ball and gives it up for UTRGV. She was the player of the year in the WAC. And they need her to have a big game today. First shot is no good. Offensive rebound and the follow attempt missed. So great opportunity out of bounds off of UTRGV. And really, Gail, that has been a theme for the Vaqueros. They play hard. They hit the offensive glass. They're not a good shooting team. Exactly. 31 offensive rebounds in their game yesterday. Just didn't take enough advantage of that. It made it a lot harder on them. Had to go to double overtime. They forced the turnover. Goff out in the open court, but New Mexico State got back on defense. That one is good from Raquel Preston, who had the game-winning shot in double overtime to get the Vaqueros here to the championship game. Yeah, and Preston didn't have a good overall game, but she hit it when it count. With that five seconds left in the game is when she hit that winning layup. She is very active on the defensive side. Almost another steal there. Now down low. Nice catch and with the left hand to finish for Brianna Freeman. And she can get it going. She has not shot the ball well in the last few weeks. If she can get it going, that's a big weapon for New Mexico State. So you can see on made baskets, New Mexico State likes to drop into a little 2 2 1 press just to slow UTRGV down a little bit. Three point attempt is good. So Kirchin's daughter, the sophomore from Iceland, who missed the layup after the offensive rebound, hits the three. Kirchin's daughter's just been playing at another level in the last three games, averaging 13 points, 16 rebounds, seven offensive rebounds a game. Very impressive. And if she can convert on a few more of those, UTRGV has a great chance in this one. There's an offensive rebound for the Aggies and the basket for Salas. I think because these two teams played each other last year in this championship game, they both look very comfortable early on. It's good to see. Aston drives. Nice pass down below, but a block shot. Nice defensive reaction from Sasha Weber. Head coach for the Aggies, Mark Track, who's in his fifth year in Las Cruces. The coach of the year in the WAC two different times. He has done an excellent job with this program. He's got a lot of experience, former head coach of Pepperdine at USC in the Pac-10 when he was in L.A. He actually coached in high school, one of my the best players ever to play at Duke University, Nicole Erickson. More offensive rebounding for the Vaqueros and a foul against New Mexico State. So in the first few minutes of this first quarter, there's Larry Tidwell, his third year as the head coach of UTRGV. And another guy who has rebuilt his program, looking to get to the NCAA tournament for the first time in their history. You see the little pink bow. I asked him about that yesterday. He said, I want every day to be Breast Cancer Awareness Day. This shot with the left hand from Parchin's daughter. Another chance, this time from the baseline. That jumper is short, and a foul against UTRGV. University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. A new name for the school. Uh, last year, you mentioned these two teams played in this championship game a year ago in the WAC. At that point, UTRGV was still known as Texas Pan American. Two of nine shooting so far in the first quarter for the Carroll's. Joshua Weber, first team all whack performer, excellent player, and a great pass down low for the layup. Yeah. 
pressure that you were talking about. We force a turnover. You would expect Shantae Golf to take a shot pretty soon. I didn't think it'd be quite from that far away, but player of the year, she likes to be aggressive early on. And again, doing just a really nice job penetrating gap, the gaps of that zone, getting inside. Two points for per Preston. I think there's some similarities in the games of Goff for UTRGV and Weber, who made that pass and now will shoot from the corner. This is the three. Aggies grabbed the offensive rebound. That's Mariah Mack, who really played well in the game yesterday, the semifinal win against Utah Valley. Tough catch for Mack. Three from the right side. That one way too strong. The offensive rebounding on both sides of theme in the early minutes. This time, UTRGV gets the defensive board. Watson's daughter trailing and then travel. Interesting player, Hildur Bjorg Karchin's daughter, the sophomore 6'2 from Iceland. Harry Tidwell goes all over the world, literally, to find players for his program. Three players on his team from overseas. Iceland, Romania, and Turkey. So that, that spreads Larry out a little bit. <laughs> he goes everywhere to find talent. Back dribble middle. Now a three-pointer from the freshman. Beautiful stroke from Brooks Salas. And again, Brooke Silas makes the, made the all-newcomer team. She's just got a really nice game, great feel for the game. She's not just a three-point shooter. She can take it to the basket as well. Yeah, she's going to be a heck of a player. Foul against the Aggies sends us to our first timeout, a berth in the NCAA. 70 to 52 the final and it's worth remembering UT Pan American that is the same school same program UTRGV new name two Texas institutions were merged together UT Brownsville UT Pan Am to form UTRGV you may not recognize the name it is different this year but the same program and looking to get to the NCAA tournament themselves for the first time in their history yeah, and Coach Larry Tidwell has done such a tremendous job with this program. Just his third year. Last year, first winning season for the program in 30 years. And now back to back again. They've got 19 wins as, as well again, and they're eligible for the NCAA or the WNIT if they shouldn't win today. Jumper off the inbound pass from Raquel Preston was no good. So the Yankees have the ball. That was an impressive box out. Every player. Box somebody out. That's what, as a coach, you love that. You find a body, box them out. And after the offensive rebounds in the early minutes, you figure that was probably a point of emphasis in that last time out. And that was something Coach Mark Track talked about. His biggest concern was the offensive rebound of UTRGV. With a foul, count the basket. For Tyler Ellis off the bench. And again, excellent job with the penetration, draw, and dish. Tyler Ellis giving great minutes off the bench. You see that bandage on her head. She got cut pretty bad yesterday in the game. She's a warrior. And she misses that free throw, but sort of missed it so hard to the left. It ricocheted off of Karchin's daughter and out of bounds. Well, if you're going to miss, you might as well miss so that nobody can get the rebound because they're not expecting the shot. Uh, that's exactly what happened. The Aggies keep possession on a 9 nothing run up 11-5. to Sasha Weber, we just saw her of those highlights from last year's championship game. Alice, the freshman who didn't play last year in this game, throws it away. Good steal by Shantae Goff. Two on one. Goff gets it back. And misses the shot from close range. Out of bounds off of the Aggies. And that UTRGV, they have to make those shots. Yeah, Shantae Goff, she's been playing at such an elite level. Averaging over 22 points a game in the last four games. She's got to score for her team to be successful. And they get looks. They work themselves into good looks. They just haven't often converted those looks. That one was tipped, so that's out of bounds off of New Mexico State. A little bit of a mental mistake from the Aggies. They had a chance to just grab that ball and let it go out of bounds. It was off of them. No shot clock reset. Goff 
half. The player Gale was just talking about. Nice entry pass down low and a good move, but again, couldn't convert. And those are the shots you got to make. Those shots you want to win a championship. So Murphy did everything but put the ball in the basket. Back cut off. Gets it back from outside the free throw line. Banks it in. I heard her call it. She called me. <laughs> who missed the first eight games of the year with an eligibility issue but has really played well down the stretch. Another good look, this time for Maldonado, no good. TRGV is two for 15 at the start of this game. Long rebound, tracked down by Mack. And that's what Mack does. She does a little bit of everything. She makes those hustle plays. First team all conference selection, all defensive conference selection. She's tough on both ends of the floor. Denise Davis missed the three. This is where Shantae Golf don't settle. You know, she settled a little bit for the outside shots in the last game. She can get to the basket almost on anybody. Preston drives toward the basket. Just had to bring it up there. She was falling off balance. Salas comes away with the ball. There's Sasha Weber, 4-3. Now Larry Tidwell wants a timeout. Out of the timeout, 2-11 to go first quarter. Dave Fleming, Gail guest at course, championship game in the WAC, and a big run for New Mexico State. Now pressure out of the timeout, and the Aggies come away with the ball, but can't quite finish off the play. Shot clock does reset, so there was a change of possession. RTRGV with a break, they keep it. Abonado for three, and they needed that one badly. That ends the 14-0 Aggies run. From the corner, Salas answers. Excellent team basketball. I love the way that New Mexico State is sharing the basketball, looking to penetrate gaps and finding the open teammate. That three, no good from... Peters, offensive rebound, and a travel before the contact. Again, just excellent job. You see every score they've had has come off of them, some kind of penetration, getting the ball inside, and then finding that outside shooter. Now Weber from the outside, so the shots are falling for New Mexico State. In this first quarter, UTRGV is already in trouble. Well, the Aggies make shots in this league. They're unbeatable. Maldonado, her second three in a row. Those are huge shots for the Vaqueros. Maldonado, she's playing with that intensity. You can see she's frustrated with her teammates. They're playing timid. You come into this game, you want to win a championship, you've got to go for it on offense and on defense. Nick Sasha Weber likes this game, likes this championship setting. Last year, she was the star, and so far, she is playing at a very high level. Nine first quarter points to lead the way for New Mexico State. A four second difference, game clock, shot clock. From the corner, the three is good. And Michelle Hyman. There's another talented freshman in this game. Final second, stolen. And that one is no good. So for UTRG. They can hit those shots. They've got to get out, make them, make them put them on the deck. Those last two highlights, that'll make your point guard happy when you give an assist. You just flip the ball over, almost a handoff. Basket good, give me an assist. It's always my dream as a point guard. <laughs> a shooter. Quite a pace here in this championship game. 25 first quarter points for New Mexico State. Alicia Peters. Down low, and a move to the basket. Nice move from Laura Van Tilburg, the sophomore. A couple players from West Laco, Texas, which is just a few miles from campus. So a local player. Oh, left Weber alone outside again, not this time. In the offensive boards, but a save into golf. Look for Goff to go right to the basket. 
she's starting, she's settling. And that happens sometimes when you're tired. You know, we forget she played 49 minutes in the double overtime game yesterday and 40 minutes on Wednesday as well. So she might have some tired legs, but you can't settle. You've got to continue to attack the basket. That is certainly a challenge for today for UTRGB. Double overtime last night. Bounce pass down low. Missed layup, though. From Tyler Ellis, that would have been another assist for Shanice Davis, who's really passing the ball well. Maldonado, who has helped keep UT Rio Grande Valley in this game from the outside. Diamond for three. That one you could tell right out of her hand was off the mark. tendency is to settle for those three-point shots and and you've got to really be disciplined to say I know I'm fatigued but that means I want to get to the basket I want to get to the free throw line. James Donner and Preston come back in Larry Tidwell's team UTRGV they love this little extended zone where they'll look to trap the point guard when they cross half court and trap the first wing pass. We saw it this morning. New Mexico State worked extensively on breaking that press. From the corner, Shanice Davis against that zone. And that's the point you were making, Gail, was no matter what defense you're playing, they have to get out and challenge those jump shots. New Mexico State is making them. That three too strong for Maldonado. Mexico State now has nine assists on 11 made baskets. So they're doing such a tremendous job sharing the basketball. Another good pass. Mac passed up the jumper, though. That's where Mac probably should have taken that shot. Once you get that penetration inside out, go ahead and take that shot. She's got some hesitation right now in her game. Yeah, nifty ball handling, but again, gave it up. That three is good. Shanice Davis now making it from the outside. Lots of things going right for the top seed Aggies. The difference so far, Preston tried a very difficult pass, and it's out of bounds off of her teammate. Difference from last week to this is stark. And again, we continue to see the extra pass the Aggies are making for wide open three-point shots, and they're knocking them down. Now you see this little extended zone press right here, looking to trap if they can. New Mexico State wanted to get the ball in the middle of the floor, pass fake, and reverse the ball quickly. Genesis on 12 field goals. Missed shot from Davis from close range. Only a week ago, the Aggies were 13 and 1 this year in the WAC. Their only loss was one week ago today at home on their senior night to this same team. UTRGV, that one is off of Maldonado, so it's Aggies ball. And these teams are evenly matched. They they split in the regular season. New Mexico State won at UTRGV by 11. And then UTRGV returned the favor last week. The Maggies have been so good these last couple of years. It, feel, it feels like they're a power in this league. They had not been to the tournament before last year since 1987-88. They've been a long, long time, almost 30 years. Good move and a foul. Errol William will go to the free throw line. Really good patience by William. She had the shot, gave a little shot fake, took her time, and went inside. William is from here in Las Vegas. The homecoming for this tournament from Centennial High School. That's the first of two free throws. New Mexico State to set their press again. Up made free throws. They like to extend that press into a 1 2 1 1. TRGV did a good job that time breaking it from a long way outside. Maldonado missed the three. And that's a foul against Crutchen's daughter. That's just a frustration foul. She's used to getting to that offensive glass, as we talked about before, averaging seven offensive rebounds over the last three games. But give credit to New Mexico State for really doing a good job boxing out. Davis on the outside. 
back at 10. Pass down low, shot partially blocked, but a whistle and a foul. Taisha Taylor, the freshman from Temple, Texas, to the line. The UTRGV, I mean, they do look tired. They look like a tired team. Well, not just physical fatigue, but I think it's the emotional fatigue as well. Because they had the double overtime game, and in the game before against Chicago State, they were down nine in the fourth quarter with only seven minutes left. So they had to come back to win that game. And then, of course, the game before that was the game against New Mexico State, where they beat New Mexico State on their home court. So the last three wins have been very emotional. Tough. That pass saved from one into the backcourt, but maybe not a great idea. Davis goes all the way and scores. Nice move, Janice Davis. Excellent transition by Davis. Great body control. And another timeout. Sunday streams live on Watch ESPN, on the ESPN app, and on the men's side, it feels like LSU and Ben Simmons, as much as we might like to watch him play in the tournament, they might have made it easy on the committee with that performance today. That was ugly. Texas A&M is a good team. Those Aggies played great. These Aggies, New Mexico State, playing at a very high level, up 36-16. Already shooting 56% from the floor, 55% from the three-point line. Ten assists on 13 baskets. They, they're clicking on all cylinders. Our outside shot way off the mark. Didn't hit the rim, so that's a shot clock violation. It feels like these 442... Real Grand Valley, they got to figure out something to try to stay in this game. Yeah, and Shantae Golf, conference player of the year, has only three shots, 0 for 3. They have to get her going. Look for them to set some ball screens for her, get her going to the basket, or south. Black player of the year has not scored in this game. Inside, the missed shot from Taylor. Golf has the ball. That's where she's giving it up in transition. She's most dangerous in transition before the defense gets set. So I'd love to see her go to the basket in transition. That's a foul against New Mexico State away from the ball. Now one thing about the Aggies, 25 and 4, you see that record 13 and 1 in the whack. When you play in a league like this, the reality is, despite that tremendous regular season, Goff finally does attack and gets herself to the free throw line. New Mexico State has to win this game. They lose this game. They're not in the field, despite all the regular season success. Sometimes that puts extra pressure on a team that's had such a great regular season. They are not playing like they've got a lot of pressure on them here this afternoon. It is a lot of pressure, and I think winning this tournament championship last year, going to the NCAAs, there, there's nothing better than those kind of experiences to give you that confidence and that level of comfort. I think that's a good point. Goff did finally get on the scoreboard, but only one of two. UTRGV got the offensive rebound. Let's see if Goff can get closer to the basket again. Playing some good defense. Goff pulls up. Tough runner uses the glass. But that's her first field goal. They need more of that. They need a lot more of that. And Goff tends to score in bunches. So she's very streaky. Look for her to shoot again. Nice move from Brooke Salas. I think you and I both think this freshman, you get a chance to be a heck of a player. And it's because she's she understands the game. She's not one-dimensional. El Dorado High School, Placentia, California. The Las Cruces and has had a great freshman year. Another runner from Goff, not this time. Weber comes away with the rebound. It looks okay. She took a shot on this side of the floor last time down. Mack just not looking to shoot, but when your teammates are shooting well for the outside. And pass is the better play. Not that time for Shanice Davis, though. Goff pull up in transition. No good. A great pass. Davis, one dribble. Draws the foul. No, traveled before the foul. I mentioned that collision with Sasha Weber, the star senior for the Aggies. Oh, 
Yeah, that's she definitely she got knocked down. Oh, that left hip. Apparently okay though, stayed in the game. This is the championship. It's gonna be hard to get her out of this game. Take off. The Mexico State, known for their 3 2 matchup zone, does such a nice job. There's a three straight on and good from Adil Turk, the freshman from Istanbul, Turkey, who Gail is not shy in shooting the ball. She comes off the bench ready to score. Yeah, she only played three minutes in the double overtime game yesterday, but in those three minutes, she hit a huge three. To put her team up one, she had two big free throws to tie the game. She also had two air balls from the three, but she has no conscience. She was ready to play. A nice pass from Weber down low on the bucket for Ellis. I think the passing, as much as the outside shooting for New Mexico State, has been the story of this first half. And that's what I've been most impressed by. But if you're UTRGV, they haven't really taken anything away. They haven't taken away any of the passing angles. They haven't taken away the inside game. And definitely haven't taken the threes away. You've got to take something away from a team that's as good as New Mexico State. Preston on the baseline, too strong. It's back to pull up. Trying to use glass. Another offensive rebound for Tyler Ellis. has been real active. I think she'd like that matchup. Went right by Turk. Just such a smart player. Again, can shoot the three, but put it on the deck. She's got such a bright future ahead of her. She's got 12 first half points. Bad pass. Turnover. And a timeout for the Aggies in the final 37 seconds of this second. I mean, it would be shocking if Duke's not in the tournament. With the, the power position that program has been in for so many years. They've, they've had some injuries, so I, I'm thinking they, they might take that into account. Monday will be a stressful day in Durham. Out of the timeout, New Mexico State shot clock at 10. Ryan Mack. Weber on the outside. Now William, they got to get a shot off. Mack doesn't. Well, they didn't realize that shot clock situation got to shoot the ball 8.6 seconds left for UTRGV But we saw a level of defensive intensity from UTRGV that we had not seen up until that point So hopefully they, they thrive on getting 10 second calls and, and 30 second shot clock violations So hopefully their defense can get their offense going Here's Goff final seconds of the half gave it up and a block shot at the buzzer no good and kind of a fitting